I saw an endless desert scene broiled by a relentless sun. The sun's rays parted, facilitating the appearance of an Egyptian pharaoh and his queen. I immediately recognized her as Queen Nefertiti. The man with her I took to be her husband, reported by history to be Akhenaten, the so-called heretic pharaoh. Holding hands as lovers do, they emerged from the brilliant rays majestic in their bearing. My eyes were drawn to Nefertiti and the child she tenderly cradled in her other arm. I then became aware of a multitude of people. It seemed as though the entire world was watching the royal couple present the baby. By now he had grown to manhood. Simultaneously, Suffering people of all races knelt in worshipful adoration, lifting their arms and offering their hearts to the man. I became strongly aware of the tremendous and compelling force that went out from him, backed by the image of the rising sun, symbolizing the tremendous force at the disposal of this child who is to lead the world. I see the youth flock to him in much the same way that some of the youth today make their pilgrimages to their gurus. Like Christ, the Antichrist too will center his work around the city of Jerusalem. I saw humanity arrive at the Valley of Decision, a fork in the road where the child of the East made a sharp turn to the left. This moment marked the point of decision, for here everyone individually was given the choice of either following the child or going on, continuing to where the path became straight and narrow. The detail Mrs. Dixon gives concerning the city of Jerusalem parallels corresponding passages in the biblical prophecies and is particularly relevant as it points to one of the most important missions Barack Obama will accomplish, a mission for which he was carefully chosen. Many ancient traditions consider Jerusalem to be the center of the world. Palestine does have a very interesting strategic location at the crossing point of three main continents of the Northern Hemisphere, Europe, Asia, and Africa. It is no coincidence that all the past world empires and later Napoleon and Hitler considered the possession of it to be essential. Geographically, it even seems to be at the exact middle of the Earth's landmass. Jerusalem is also considered holy by the world's three major religions, so its strategic and symbolic significance is greater than that of any other location in the world. The Temple of Moses, reconstructed by King Solomon after its first destruction, seems to play an especially important role in many esoteric traditions. It is a prominent element in the teachings of Freemasonry, for example. Sir Isaac Newton, the great scientific theoretician and mathematician, was deeply interested in esoteric teachings. He meticulously studied the Temple of Solomon and illustrated its symbolism in great detail. The place in Jerusalem, where the temple and the priestly compounds once stood, is now occupied by the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, 
two of the most sacred Islamic shrines. It is from here that Muhammad is believed to have ascended to heaven after his death. The Wailing Wall, at which devout Jews pray, is a remnant of a retaining wall of the mount where the Temple of Solomon once stood. The Orthodox Jews believe that they are still obligated to perform the sacrificial temple rituals in adherence with the instructions of Moses, and so cannot truly fulfill the tenets of their religion until the temple in Jerusalem is rebuilt. They have detailed architectural plans for its construction and have already prepared the priest's robes according to the Old Testament descriptions. But of course the temple cannot be built unless something occurs which under the present political situation would be tantamount to a miracle, a solution to the Middle East conflict. The situation will develop into a crisis of global proportions, bringing the world to the brink of a nuclear holocaust. It will require the intervention of a miracle worker to broker a lasting peace. That miracle worker has already been brought onto the scene of world history. His name is Barack Hussein Obama, an American president with a Muslim background whom all parties involved in the Middle East conflict can accept as a negotiating partner and who will accomplish that of which no one previously had been capable, the task of bringing about a lasting solution for that perpetually seething conflict, which has been the main source of global instability for the past 60 years. <laughs>